Hello and welcome to the Sacral Circle where we are healing sexual trauma collectively and lovingly. I'm your host, Janie Terrazas, and I'll be interviewing individuals from all walks of life who have faced sexual trauma or abuse in one form or another and triumphed over their adversity. On every episode, a guest will deliver inspirational support, words of comfort, and empowering healing advice. They'll courageously share how their experience impacted their lives and what they did to restore their mind, body, heart, and soul. Be sure to subscribe to my podcast, The Sacral Circle. Just search Sacred Stories on iTunes. I want to thank our listeners for joining us today on The Sacral Circle, the self-love haven where we leave judgment at the door. And today I'm grateful to have my beautiful friend, Asusena Ramirez. She was a guest on a previous episode. You can check that out. And I believe it's been a couple of years since you were on the sacral circle and you have gone through a lot of amazing experiences. I'm just excited to hear about where you are currently in your life and all the ways in which you have taken back your sexual and creative power and your vitality as you've been going through this process of diving more deeply into the wounds that you had around objectification and all the cultural wounds and the ancestral wounds that you had. And we spoke the other day a little bit about how you use that sexual energy in a way that was manipulative and unhealthy and how you're now using it to restore and reclaim all of your greatness and allness and wholeness. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I want to start to, to the fact that I actually feel more whole. The feeling that I have not only in my body, but in my spirit and in my mind is definitely wholesome versus broken or in pieces that it was even three years ago and definitely five years and further out. So it's coming together and each, each year, each day gets better. <laughs> exactly. And I know that for you, um, part of your personal growth and the, the trauma that you've been healing, you've been open to plant medicine and you've also gone to some really wonderful retreats. I know Dr. Joe Dispenza is a retreat that you recently went to. And mm -hmm. so I'd love for you to share a little bit about what plant medicine has done for you, which ones, you know, were the ones that really spoke to you and how that has impacted your life, because now you're actually helping others through that same process, it's almost like you're finding your calling when it comes mm -hmm. to administering and holding space, sacred space, and creating rituals for people to also enjoy some of these medicines that you've, you know, experienced. Yeah, I, I started plant medicine four and a half years ago, and uh, it was with a common friend that we have, his name is Jason. On <laughs> one uh, one weekend, he said, "Who wants to go with me to Austin?" in two weekends from now, I'm going to try ayahuasca. And I'm like, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, I think I'll do it. Imagine as if you're choosing a, an ice cream flavor. It's like, yeah, I think I like that flavor. Oh, no, I did not know what I was getting myself into. And, uh, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I just went head on and I embraced it. And it was not, um, it was, it was hard at the beginning. I'm not going to lie. It was a hard up, up the mountain type of um, experiences with ayahuasca at the beginning, plain and simple. There's a lot of healing. There was a lot of trauma of one session, for example, and I can clearly remember this, that I had with Aya. Um, she was clearing all of my male ancestral um, background. But the thing is, when you, when you heal um, seven generations back, you're also healing seven, seven generations forward mm. so and and I was feeling it it was just and I, I knew I could feel that it was male energy coming out of me um that was healing and it was it was nasty <laughs> it was hard mm. it was hard so yeah, that's that's some medicine that I've done way I mean at least good 10 12 13 times something like that um throughout this year's um, also, there's another one, Wachuma. There's um, um, heart medicine. Mm -hmm. um, Kana is called. There's another one that's also heart medicine. What, what I mean by heart medicine is it focuses, once it's ingested, it focuses in your 
spirit and physical heart in helping you open and integrate the dimensions of the fifth dimension of your heart into this dimension uh, that you are in, in the third dimension, to experience and live and feel that openness of mm-hmm. your heart by, by releasing and shedding. You will have a lot of tears, but these are good tears that need to be released or have been blocked. Mm-hmm. So you will let go a lot of that. And, and this could come from something as, as traumatic as, as maybe someone standing you up on a date, <laughs> you know, or yeah. something as simple as that, or something as simple as when a friend of yours uh, passed or when a friend of yours just left you and you guys moved away. And so it just it hurts from your heart, just mm-hmm. wounds from the heart. It helps you open up and then it opens up your heart and physically you can feel it just like you see love everywhere. It's, and it's a great experience because you're impacting that feeling in your body cells who, who in, in retrospect, they remember, they remember yeah. everything. <laughs> yes. We talk a lot about that on, on this program is that trauma gets trapped cellularly. You know, Dr. Deepak Chopper talks about the issues are in the tissues. So when you're able to fully holistically heal it on a cellular level, the impact that it has is much more powerful. It, it yeah. clears up your mental body, your emotional body, your spiritual body, and your physical body. And you feel a, like a true transformation from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. And then to the degree that it also, you feel physically lighter. I mean, I remember after just my first ayahuasca with my with my group, we were um, the next, the following morning in integration and just about everybody in there says, you just look lighter. You look clearer. You look, you can tell you shed something off your shoulders. It, it shows in your face. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, it, it's, it, it does. It does indeed. Why? Because and- you're, you're softening, you're softening, I don't know, you're softening a wound. Mm-hmm. It's like you're breathing love and life and compassion into a piece of you that was like dead. And it illuminates it and shines a light in it in a way that allows you to understand yourself and that wound in an expansive way that opens up your perspective, which is part of, I think, the opening of the heart. You know, you're you're looking at it with the eye of the heart, you know, in spirit. And how do you not look at that with intelligence and loving wisdom and kindness and compassion and mercy? You know, and and I really love that you touched on that, that your body felt lighter and we're really dealing with that pain, the pain in the heart, you know, it's all the things that have caused of caused us grief and, Mm -hmm. um, and heartache. And that creates sort of a disembodiment from the body. And I'd love for you to touch a little bit on that and like really feeling all the little nuances from your body when it's speaking to you. Yeah, indeed. And this started around maybe with ayahuasca, with ayahuasca, and then with, um, it was a combination Aya and then a heart medicine. So both of them together, not together, but one after the other. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have the, the push of Aya and then you have the, towards the end of, uh, of the medicine as it's winding down, then you kick in the heart medicine. So it's really powerful and almost, oh my gosh, almost spiritual healing that you're having. Mm-hmm. In this one particular session, I had a um, beautiful communion with the divine. What I mean with that is, uh, as soon we were in the middle of we're in the middle of the of of the session with I with ayahuasca, and they and the the shaman he played a song. Now, what I didn't know, I learned later that this particular song ha- has the names of God in various uh, Sanskrit and just several languages. Mm -hmm. holy languages and uh, it's talking about the devotion and 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 love one must have towards the divine towards god and the spirit within you um so the song started and as soon within five seconds of that song starting my body my hands moved into a mudra my hands were on my chest and then all of a sudden all of a sudden they opened up to the side 
mm-hmm. and it came in the mudra of uh, one finger next to the other finger, like, like prayer mm-hmm. um, immediately. And then my body started doing some yoga, heart opening movements. Um, as the music, as the song evolved, uh, there was another posture, which really surprised me because I've had this feeling for almost all my life that I, I must have a background. I must, I must somewhere in my lineage, I must be from the Middle East because my body went into this. I was in such a beautiful, holy space, all golden with white, bright, um, luminescence in, in, it's just golden, bright sparkles mm-hmm. <laughs> of white. And it, um, and my head went into the, into the, as in prayer, went into the ground, tapping it. And then it went in, my hands went together and went to my forehead and then to my mouth and then to my heart and then into a devotional posture. And now these are movements that I've never done consciously myself. Mm-hmm. My body was just doing them in the rhythm with, mm. with breath. I was just each breath that I was taking was creating another movement. And then another movement, I was like in a trance communing. I was just, I was the only one there with God. Holy spirit was like moving through your body, through the mm-hmm. breath and was guiding your body into these positions. It was like telling a story and comforting you. And Oh my gosh, that's so mm. amazing. And it was, that, it was, it was, it was devotion. It was just the only way I could, I could communicate my love to the divine was through my movements through my just God, just listen to my heart through this movements and, and see how loving I want to be to you. And I, yeah. So amazing. And you brought up, you know, again, the sound, you know, there's sound healing and there's all these different healing modalities that when they come together, really amazing, miraculous things happen. And we shed, you were talking about shedding skins and, and really Mm -hmm. kind of shedding the old and stepping into the new. And I know one of the other forms of plant medicine has been mushrooms and you've also done cacao. And so I know that we recently had a small little gathering and some, that deep core wound, um, really surfaced in that moment. And I don't know if you are comfortable sharing a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, now let's just preface that our, yep. our mushroom ceremony was two days after I, I arrived from being in a seven day retreat with, um, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, mm. so I, when you're in a, when you're, when you go to Dr. Joe Dispenza's retreats, week-long retreats, you're meditating six, seven hours a day. I mean, you go into space, you go deep. Mm -hmm. You go deep because you're in the community. You are in a room of over a thousand people. In this case, we were 1,350, 1,350 people from 49 countries. In this big room, all of us, the same intention of communing with the divine, going within and just 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 communing um so you come back to reality you bring back that energy yeah I mean I was vibing high even days after I came back Uh, very high you're like oh my gosh I'm floating through (laughs) I was still floating (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) so when I so when we did um the ceremony the mushroom ceremony uh, in the evening on a two days later when I came back yeah, after after doing the um, after ingesting the mushrooms, obviously you, the ritual of having your intention and, um, and creating that intention as you as you drink your medicine, you know, uh, minutes later, half an hour later, or so I feel like kicking in, and I can just it it just gave me some type of. I was vibing high. I'm talking that my body was humming energy. <laughs> As yeah. you mentioned, I mean, it was vibing. Um, I couldn't even stop it. It was movements that I did not, again, I don't usually do. And uh, even to, even in my head, which that was totally new. I've never moved my head. Like when you do a quick look to the right or a quick look to uh-huh. the left, yes. that, 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 that was happening. And I'm like, Whoa, where'd this coming from? And it was just, <laughs> energy coming through and my eyes were covered with a face mask and all I could see in inside of me was really 
like a bluish kind of blue sky with white diamonds, white sparkles. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that that's the only thing I could see. And, and I put my shades on my face mask on purpose. So I could go in, I could go in deeper. I could stay deeper versus staying in the third dimension. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you know, uh, that was, I got a chance to to witness that. And I think you're talking about the most recent experience you had. And Mm -hmm. the one I was talking about was when you had a chance to go out to this like beautiful ranch someplace. Remember there was all these like beautiful animals and you had, I believe you had also come off of an awesome retreat because that one wasn't a really beautiful purge that you went through that evening. And I believe you were coming off of a retreat even back then. (laughs) I was this Oh, yeah, you're right. No, the, the one I was referring to right now was um, with the buzzing, all the buzzing of energy was the one that, that the one that we just did recently. Okay, gotcha. the yeah. one, Amazing. the one that you talking, huh. you're right. right. Yeah, yeah. The one that you're referring to when we were at a ranch, it was, um, it was a month later, three or four weeks later after, again, a Dr. Joe Dispenza <laughs> event. And And yeah, what happened in that particular one, and it was just on mushrooms and rapé. Rapé is the sacred tobacco uh, originally from Brazil, but it's used in South America, all over South America. Um, But it's the most sacred, cleanest, purest form of tobacco in a powder form. And it's combined, that's the base, and it's combined with sacred plants, with the powder of other sacred plants to serve its purpose. So if one rapé, you want it to be more for opening your heart, some of the plants, some of the flowers or essence that's going to be added to the, to the tobacco will be, will be in sana. It's just one of them, for example, then you can add other things, but you try to add the plant that will cure the ailment that you're looking for. You want more grounding, more body grounding, then you use other plants. So all of them have tobacco as a base. And then the other plants that will ail and work together to heal the body. And that, that in itself is a, it's a cleansing rich ritual. It's a powder that you, with a curipe, you blow up into your nose, okay. um, aiming towards the third eye, <laughs> aiming mm-hmm. towards the third eye. But um, so, yeah, it really shuts down your thoughts and really centers you for a deeper meditation. Um I I work very well. I it, rapé is my medicine. I've been working with it for a year and a half, uh, diligently, and I just it just does really well for me. Really, we we buy real well. <laughs> mm. But um, going back to that ranch, um, in that particular area, what what was coming? What happened is after a good forty my forty five minutes into the medicine something was coming out, something or someone was coming out and I could feel it from within my solar plexus. And it was something very disgusting. I mean, I was even moving my mouth, you know, when you want to, when you have a bad taste in your mouth and you're almost like chewing it, you want to spit it out, but yes. Okay. That's what was happening. That's how disgusting this feeling was inside of me. And it came from the solar plexus. It came up and then I just wanted to spit it out or move something. I, I started burping a lot. And um, with your guidance and help, we were able to um, call it out and identify it with some key questions that you you were right there next to me. Mm-hmm. And it, it was all, it was a male person from my, a guy that I dated 20 years ago. And how he pushed me down, how he didn't believe in me. And he just like, why you even want to finish college? Forget that. Don't worry about it. And I, I stood up. I didn't, I believed that I wanted to finish college and I did, mm-hmm. but um, he was trying to sell me and make me small. Right. And, was- and make, and, and creating doubt and doubts and doubts in my, within myself in every decision I was making. So he was living inside of me practically, or that entity or that guy was living inside of me. And I was disgusted. I was tired of that. I was tired of that energy pulling me down and making me feel insecure and doubtful. Right. So we were able to just spit him out per se. Uh, Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't spit it out, but we were able to move him out. 
Mm-hmm. And it, it, it literally, there was a, a purging, like it was like an energetic purge of like, yes, I need to get it out of every cell inside of my body. I want to take back ownership and autonomy and sovereignty of my body and all of my chakras and my power. And Mm -hmm. it was really interesting that you were able to connect it to that one person and how that that came to mind immediately because you asked me and I had a feeling already that it Mm -hmm. came from some male, but Mm -hmm. you asked me through some questions and that was the only person I could think of. So it had to be him. Right. Um, Yeah. And yeah, we were able to purge it. Um, not, not physical, nothing physical came out, but it was more, the burping was very deep and consecutive, uh, very back to back, the burping. And it just, even one of our friends that was there present was able to see, I mean, he's got some powers, he's got some, yes. some gifts and he was able to see the entity come out. Yeah, um, he that he kind of saw like sort of this male figure and it was kind of like a charcoal black, but that yeah. he was like walking away from you, like leaving, like you could see him leaving. And oh, I had got a similar uh, visual that was just slightly different, but there were some similarities to it. So it was like, we were both sensing and feeling the same thing in a different way. And then yeah. you had your personal experience. So you were able to vocalize that as well. So it really helped all of us we were all in this deep state of belief that what had just occurred actually happened and that you had literally liberated yourself of this, this deep wound that was continuing to support that, the self doubt, you know, and the yeah. self, the self critic, because where you are in your life, there's a lot of like growth that you're experiencing and changes that you're wanting to make. And now that you have this power and the self belief and a self worth and esteem restored, it's like you have more resilience now. Oh yeah, definitely. And then, he was able to see, yeah, when that, that energy left my body, but he also saw when I was being restored, when I stood, when I stood straighter, when my shoulders went back and he saw a white luminescent image coming out of me, um, energy just kind of glowing out of me. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it replaced the heaviness replaced by light. The pain was replaced by peace. Yeah. So that just proves how deep, uh, the healing can be by using these tools and they are tools. That's all they are tools. Mm -hmm. Um, Another session that I had with mushrooms um, maybe six months ago or so, I literally felt a, um, a, uh, when someone stabs you in the back, I felt a stabbing in my back and I'm like, there's something there. There's some, I could feel it. And I asked the person that was, that was sitting with me that was taking care of me I asked him there's something in my back help me move it he he did a few movements he did a few patting in my back and my chakras and and then I started also burping a lot and um, I come to find out later on I called one of my good friends who's a shaman works with energy on regular basis he says yes when someone backstabs you you (laughs) can feel it especially mm-hmm. if it was close to you. And then if, um, if you backstab someone, the pain will come in your heart. The, you mm-hmm. will feel the pain in your heart. Yes. It's like you can um, feel that betrayal and that mm-hmm. disappointment lives in certain places in the body. And that's yep. one of them that is that betrayal. Wow. Yeah. So amazing. And, and How really we had the emotions oh. are connected to the body, right? Absolutely. And to honor them and, and all of us have, you know, inner wounds, you know, especially from childhood. And it's important for us to, to walk through those traumas wisely and to do it with like, when you're going to use plant medicine, you want to know that you're going to somebody who you feel safe with and that has good intentions. And you've always been really blessed and fortunate to Mm -hmm. meet some really powerful people powerful people that are also very humble and yeah. are getting very clean plant medicine and exactly. are honoring it and respecting it and blessing and you know and so then you get your hands on it and so anytime anybody wants to do this what would you say is a is the best thing that they can maybe do first and foremost probably research it right and if it's calling you what what do you think they should do yeah if it's if it's calling you, if you've been thinking about it and something is sparks inside of you, yeah, start reading about it, start learning about it. And if you have any friends of your trust that you can inquire, ask, I, I would, if for some reason you 
don't have anybody that you can trust that to ask for guidance or anything like that, just go to some yoga classes. Chances are that people, <laughs> our, our yogis are, uh, will know someone who knows someone more nine yeah. out of 10 times and uh, just get to know them. And the most important thing is for you to feel comfortable, for yeah. you to feel safe, for you to feel safe. Cause that's one of the things that are always emphasized. Um, the feeling of safety, the feeling of um, trust, because you're, you're literally putting your hand, your life in the hands of someone else, of that shaman. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why it's important. And when you walk into a ceremony, always have a clear intention. Great point. Yeah, I know exactly what you're going in for. But at the same time, when one goes into that kind of medicine, there's a level of surrendering, you know, yeah. that allows you to get more, uh, more power from the healing. Would you agree? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And that is a challenge because mm -hmm. we live in this 3D world, right? Yeah. It teaches us a lot of lessons for sure. And it does help us see and understand our fears a little more deeply, which is a big part of the know thyself, you know, love thyself journey is understanding our fears and finding ways to sit with them and understand them and work through them so we could rise above them. We mentioned earlier, and this is where we could kind of wrap up that sexual creative power and energy, especially as women, you know, when we start to restore it, there's a, a way in which we can use it manip in a, a manipulative way, because of course it's been distorted. And then there's like the healthy way. What, what's like something in a, in a nutshell that you could say about the difference between the two and where you are currently as we start to wrap up this beautiful episode. The, the way I was brought up in Mexico City and the woman being so objectified, I didn't think I was worth if I did not look perfect or dressed perfect. And I'm talking perfect meaning sexy, mm. meaning showing some cleavage or some legs. And that was, you know, if I was dressed like that, I had a seal of approval. So I think I'm going to be loved. So today I don't have to dress that way. And I don't, I choose not to because I, it, it's different phase, but I, I've gained my self-worth and my value and respect without having to dress so provocatively or so, <laughs> so of this world. It's mm -hmm. not necessary. And I still have, and I still get the feeling of wholeness and self-love. I think one of the, one of the biggest lessons has been in common throughout from the beginning, from four and a half years ago in every meditation, in every journey has been self-love. And I, I think that is the poignant, basic, fundamental self-love. Mm -hmm. Amen, sister. Hallelujah to that self-love. <laughs> yeah. it. Self-care is self-love, you know, and mm -hmm. I, with all that this world has been going through uh, this past year, I think all of us are starting to understand the importance of that. And I'm grateful for all those individuals that are on this journey of, of really becoming, you know, their whole self, their optimal self, their authentic self, because we all deserve uh, peace and joy and abundance. And we want to be the change that we want to see in the world. So it, it's going to involve all of us coming together and, this project is near and dear to me. And I always thank all those that are part of it. Here you are coming back and, and sharing your story to give us an update on where you are. So I just, I want to thank you. You have been, and will always be a part of the sacral circle, sisterhood, brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, girly. I love you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it for sure. And I'm so proud of you. I just want you to know that. And I'm so looking forward to seeing where life is going to take you in these next few years. It's so exciting. It is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and you for doing this because I'm sure it's helping other people as well. So that is oh. your divine calling that you're stepping up to. You are walking your talk. You're walking your, your calling of um, healing others. And I just, I thank you for that. You're, you're following your heart. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And we pray that all of you guys also follow your heart and your spirit. And thank you to our beautiful listeners for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the Sacred Stories podcast on iTunes, where you'll find other impactful, inspiring shows. Connect with me via social media. Just search at the Sacral Circle. 
Your shares and likes are greatly appreciated because they help spread the love. As we say goodbye, always remember to know your worth and continue to love and value yourself wholeheartedly. Peace be in you.